do this. Hey guys, and welcome to another very exciting visual effects tutorial. In this video, I want to show you how you can very easily add bruises, tattoos, or cyberpunk implants to people's faces, replace text and logos on moving clothes, perform beauty work, change someone's age, and much, much more. Now, it's always been fairly easy to track flat, planar surfaces using tools such as Mocha Pro to do screen inserts, replace text and logos, or remove objects and people from moving shots. There's some great tutorials for those things online. I'm going to drop you some links down below. However, tracking warped, as in non-planar surfaces, like someone's distorting face or a moving t-shirt, has always been pretty difficult. The new Power Mesh feature in the recently released 2021 version of Mocha Pro from Boris FX now makes that task super simple as well. In this tutorial, I want to show you how to use this cool new tool within Adobe After Effects to track my ugly face and attach a cyberpunk implant to it. Now, before we get into it, full frontal disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Boris FX. Boris FX makes some of the biggest industry-leading video effects and tools, from the Academy Award-winning planar tracker Mocha to the Sapphire and Continuum effects collections, Silhouette and Optics. These tools are used by video professionals and enthusiasts all over the world. They work with most of the popular video editing tools out there, and Boris FX offers lots of different licensing options to suit your needs. Go and check out all of the awesome stuff they have on their website, and if you do decide to get in on the fun, you can use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio in one word to knock 15% off the final price. But now I feel like I've waffled on for long enough, let's finally jump into the tutorial. Welcome to the exciting world of Adobe After Effects. I have a brand new empty project here and I've already imported all of the files into this project. Now, as always, if you do want to follow along, you will be able to download all of these files from my website. So simply go to surfacestudio.com forward slash downloads and you will be able to grab all of these files. To get started, let's grab the tobiasmirror.mp4 file and drop it onto the new composition icon. Now, this is just a really simple shot of me looking into the mirror and having some issues with my cyberpunk implant, which right now obviously isn't there. Now, I've already done a little bit of work on this shot. I've removed the reflection of the camera and inserted some UI HUD sci-fi elements into the backdrop, all using Mocha Pro. And if you want separate tutorials for that, just leave me some comments down below. In this tutorial, I really want to focus on inserting that cyberpunk implant onto the side of my face. And the challenge with that is that my face isn't flat and I'm scrunching up the face as well as I'm having some issues with that implant. But we are going to use the new Power Mesh feature in Mocha Pro to solve all of that for us. For that, let's come into the Effects and Presets panel and let's search for Mocha Pro and apply it to the Tobias Mirror layer. Then in the Effects controls, simply press onto the big Mocha button to launch Mocha Pro. Here we are in Mocha Pro 2021 and this is the shot that I want to track and I now want to find a frame where my face isn't fully distorted. So maybe around about frame 412 right here and zoom in a little bit. And I now want to define a shape around the side of my face. So let's select the Create X Spline tool and I'm going to draw a shape around the side of my face, including just a little bit of the edge of the ear. I don't want to include the bottom of my chin because the Power Mesh tool is actually quite sensitive going to go across the face a little bit, maybe just like this. And do note that this isn't planar, my face isn't a flat surface, but the Power Mesh tool will deal with all of that for us. Now, I don't actually want to track the eye itself. I'm not going to add the implant over that anyways, but also because my eye is kind of sunk into the face, I don't really want to track that area. So I'm going to come up to the Create X Spline tool, click and hold, and I'm going to select the Add to X Spline tool with that layer still selected. I'm not going to draw another one right around the eye, Maybe just right about there, maybe bring it in just a little bit. And this will be the area where we won't have the implant, but also I don't really want to track this area. So I want to exclude it from this shape. And if you now show your mats, we've kind of just cut that shape out right there. Let's also rename this layer to face track. Let's zoom out just a little bit. And now let's get to the tracking and talk about power mesh. In the track tab under motion, you will have your usual checkboxes for translation, scale, rotation, shear. I also want to enable perspective. And now you have a new option called mesh. I also want to enable that. And Mocha Pro is going to generate a mesh within our shape to essentially track the subplanar movement and all of the distortions that happen within this pixel area. Now for Power Mesh, we actually have a number of different options that sit under the mesh generation in the track tab. The generation mode right now is set to automatic, which means Mocha is going to try to find the most contrast rich areas and generate a mesh based on that. But you can also select uniform, which by default won't do anything because you will always have to regenerate your mesh if you change any of these parameters. If you now press generate mesh, 
this is going to generate a very uniform mesh. You can also determine whether you want any points on the splines if you disable that and generate the mesh. No points will sit outside of the spline that you've defined, but I'm just going to leave that on for now and regenerate my mesh because I want a few extra points around the outside. The other thing you can do is you can also lower the mesh size if you need more detail. Right now it's set to 32, so if we lower this to let's say maybe 20 and hit generate mesh, we're going to get a much finer mesh. And you can control this however detailed you need it for your particular surface. Now I don't need it to be quite that fine. I'm actually going to go back up to maybe around 30, hit generate mesh. But I do know that I've got some wrinkles and some more deformation happening just around the corner of my eye. So what you can also do, you can actually go in and modify this mesh yourself. In the top toolbar, you'll find an option to edit the track mesh if you enable that. Over on the right hand side, you also have an option to add new track points. I'm going to enable that as well. And now I can click and drag on existing points to move them. And I'm actually just going to create a little bit of a ring shape around the eye. I'm just going to give it a little bit more space here. And if you click on any lines between points, you can add new points. So you can add a bit more detail into your spline. But let's just add a little bit of detail here on the bottom left hand side of my eye because I know I've got some happiness lines as I like to call them. So I just want to add a little bit more detail so we're catching all of the wrinkles as I'm crunching up my face right there. And again, you can go into as much detail as you want to. Let's zoom out just a little bit. And that is looking pretty good. I'm going to return to the selection tool. And before we start tracking, I just want to quickly talk about smoothness. So mesh tracking has a smoothness option. The higher your smoothness is, the more the mesh will actually just follow the planar track that's defined by our shape that's underlying all of the subplanar movements. So it will be a more stiff mesh. If you lower your smoothness to something really low, the mesh will warp and deform really strongly to really just match the pixel error that you're tracking. And this is great if you're tracking, you know, fast moving flags or waves, whereas I probably go around about maybe 50, maybe a little bit more, 55 to 60 or something, because facial implants would probably be a little bit on the stiff side. But with all of that set up now, let's start tracking backwards and keep an eye on what happens with this mesh as I track through this. You can see how the mesh within the spline that we've defined warps and transforms to match the movement of my face. Let's zoom out a little bit and check this out. And you can really see how that mesh deforms with the movements of my face. That's looking really good. Let's come to frame 412 and let's just track this forward. And at the end here, probably maybe around about there, just before the cursor runs off the side of my screen, let's just set the endpoint for that face track. And yeah, especially here, you can really see how the mesh follows the movement of my skin as it distorts. Now, before we can insert anything using this mesh track, the one thing we need to do is we need to stabilize the footage around this mesh distortion. For that, let's come into the Stabilize tab and don't worry that the frame jumps down. It's because by default it stabilizes based on the first frame. But we want to come to our frame 412. Now on the bottom left hand side in the Stabilize tab, just click plus underneath the frame list to add that as our reference frame. Everything will snap right back in place. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to enable warping based on this mesh that we've tracked. So let's enable Mesh Warp, leave it on Unwarp and then change the quality from Draft over to High. Let me just quickly hide all overlay so you can see what's happening now. If I now scrub through my footage, you will see that the side of my face that we tracked with the mesh is going to be stabilized and steady while everything else around it distorts. This now allows us to paint on, modify or insert things on the piece that we've tracked and then by warping it, matching it back to the movement of my face. So let's do that in Adobe After Effects. Let's save the project and return to Adobe After Effects. And the first thing I want to do to make sure I have the same reference frame, go to frame 412 in your timeline and with the layer selector, press star to set a marker. This is the reference frame that we've used in Mocha Pro for our mesh track. And this is going to be important because this is the frame we need to align our implants or any overlays with. So let's come back to the project. Let's grab the Cyberpunk implant base PNG, drag that into our composition. And this is now the actual overlay. Now, right now it really doesn't sit where I want it to sit. So I'm going to scale down this layer kind of plays it over my face exactly where I want it to be in. Again, feel free to insert anything you want or modify it. Now it doesn't quite sit well perspectively. So I'm actually going to come into my effects and presets panel and search for CC power pin. Let's apply that to this layer. And I'm just going to adjust the implant a little bit. So it looks like it's perspectively sitting properly within that frame on my face. 
With all of that done, let's reselect the Cyberpunk Implant Base and let's pre-compose it. I'm going to call it Cyberpunk Implant Base Comp. Make sure you move all attributes into the composition and hit OK. So now this is a single layer that fills the entire frame of this implant sitting on my face. Let's come back to the Tobias mirror layer. I'm just quickly going to rename it as well. Let's select the Mocha Pro effect, press Ctrl, Command and C to copy it and paste it onto the Cyberpunk Implant Base Comp. Let's expand the matte options within the Mocha Pro effect and you can now enable to view the matte, which is showing the shapes, but also the cutout for the eye that we had here. Let's untick that. I actually want to apply the matte, which is going to cut out the part around the eye. I usually like to add a little bit of feather, maybe just a two, depending on how sharp you want the edges of that implant to look. Let's expand the module renders option. The module I want to render is stabilize warp because again, we have stabilized unwarping it in Mocha. So now we've added something to it. We now want to warp it so that this implant follows the movement on the side of my face. I'm going to change the warp quality over to high. Let's enable render and nothing happens, but that's also because we're sitting on the reference frame. If we jump to another frame, you can now see that this cyberpunk implant is actually following the movement as well as the rotation on my face and all of the little distortions as I scrunch and distort my face. Let's rewind the composition and play it back. You can see how this implant now sticks to the side of my face and it was really easy. And this is really the power of Power Mesh. It makes it super easy to track warping and distorting surfaces so you can add things to them or modify them. Like I could easily take all my wrinkles out or repaint things on or do whatever I wanted with this. Now this isn't a terribly great cyberpunk implant effect just yet, so let's make this look a little bit nicer. First I'm going to change the blend mode on my cyberpunk implant base comp over to multiply. I'm also going to lower the opacity to maybe around 85-ish percent. I just want it to be not quite so strong. Also do note that Power Mesh does not yet support motion blur, so if you want motion blur, you can either add CC Force Motion Blur to that layer, which is inbuilt into Adobe After Effects. The one I personally prefer is actually from Boris FX and it's called BCC Motion Blur. It looks a little nicer and it renders much faster than CC Force Motion Blur, but you can use either one. For now, however, I'm just going to disable it while we're still working with the footage, just because I don't want to slow anything down. Now, the most notable issue with this is that the implant looks way too sharp, especially because if you zoom in a little bit, the camera focus isn't always on. Right here, for example, it's actually quite blurry and I would want that implant to kind of match the blurriness of wherever the camera is focusing on. Now, the easiest way I found to do this is simply to apply a blur to this layer and use effect mask to control where the blur appears. So in the effects and preset panel, let's search for the camera lens blur effect. Let's apply that to our cyberpunk implant base comp. Let's zoom in a little bit and that is a little bit too strong. Now I want a tiny, tiny bit of blur all the time. So maybe a 0.5. Let's collapse this one. Let's apply another camera lens blur effect to it. And this one I'm going to control with masks. Let's grab the rectangle tool, zoom out. Let's draw a mask around the entire layer. But now I'm actually going to draw a, another rectangular mask, more like a vertical strip, which is going to be my area of focus. So this mask I'm going to subtract from the big one outside to define where I want this effect, this camera lens blur to effect to apply. So I can kind of define my plane of focus where I want everything to be sharp. In the Cyberpunk Implant Base Comp, let's expand the Effects tab. And under the Camera Lens Blur 2 effect, let's expand that. Under the Compositing options, let's press plus twice to add Mask 1 and Mask 2 as reference masks to this. Let's come up a little bit. Mask 1 is set to additive, so all of it will get blur, but then I'm going to subtract mask 2 from that. So let's set that to subtract. And you can now see that this mask here, this inner mask, is now going to define where I want the parts of this implant to be sharp. Let's just expand the mask and let's give this a little bit of feathering, maybe 100 or 150 and so, and then animate the mask feather, mask pass, and maybe even the mask opacity and go through the footage to animate this mask and match up the depth of field and the focus of the face to the areas of this implant that are in focus and that appear sharp. And at the end here, I'm actually just going to animate the blur radius of the entire effect because I just want the whole thing to be blurred out. Let's rewind again and play this back. And you can immediately see how much better this implant now sits in the shot that it matches the focus of the camera. The next thing I want to do to spice this up is add some sci-fi UI elements over that cyberpunk implant to just give it a bit more life and make it feel a little bit more interactive and interesting. 
Because I want to match all of the UI elements for the implant to the movement of the implant itself, I'm actually going to come back to my project panel and in here I'm going to duplicate my Cyberpunk Implant Base Comp. I'm going to rename this one to Cyberpunk Implant Glow Comp. Let's jump into that and that's really just the still image of our base. Let's select the Cyberpunk Implant Base PNG, hold down Alt or Option and select the Cyberpunk Implant Overlays MP4 and drag and drop that right onto the layer to replace it. And this is essentially a layer full of UI elements that I've overlaid onto that implant base image. Let's return to the Tobias mirror composition. Let's duplicate Cyberpunk Implant Base Comp. And again, let's rename this one to Glow Comp. Make sure it's selected, hold down Alt or Option and drag and drop the Cyberpunk Implant Glow Comp that we've just created over it to replace its contents. And I'm going to look like Zorro a little bit. So let's change the mode from Multiply over to Screen. I'm also going to bring the opacity back up to 100% to make sure that is nice and bright. Also, I'm going to add a glow effect and you can either add the standard glow effect that comes with Adobe After Effects. I just like the sapphire glow again from Boris FX. So I'm going to apply an S underscore glow effect to my Cyberpunk Implant Glow Comp. Let's just bring up the brightness to maybe three or four. I'm going to bring down the glow width to maybe around the 50 or so. So this is going to add just a little bit of intensity, a little bit of glow to some of the highlights on that implant. And finally, another layer I've prepared. If you come back into your project panel, you'll find a Tobias mirror flare effect. Let's drag and drop that at the top of the composition. And let's again set this one to screen. And again, I created this lens flare using another effect from the Sapphire collection called S underscore lens flare. I like this one because it looks really nice and natural, but also it can do auto occlusion. So you'll see it come in and out as I move my head over it. Now let's come back to the Cyberpunk Implant Glow Comp, go into the effects controls, make sure you re-enable your motion blur if you've disabled it. I'm also going to do the same on the base comp just so that everything is enabled. Let's collapse all of the layers, go back to the beginning. Let me just make this a little bit bigger and let's play back our final Cyberpunk Implant effect. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me and what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I will see you later.